podcast, you've heard me talk about lingual frenums um, and their role on speech and their role in position of tongue with uh, linked to sleep apnea. Uh, today, I want to talk about labial frenums. And uh, young uh, Tony's come in just for a consultation today, so I've asked mom, is it okay for me to show you her frenum? Can you open that, Tony? So one thing you notice is the big, uh, what we call diastema, which is a gap between the teeth, and you can see where that frenum is, right? Now, a couple of things I look at for a frenum. First of all, the insertion should be above the mucogingival junction. So if you look at the lower, just bite together for me there, thank you. If you look at the lower frenum, and everyone has a frenum, it shouldn't be as obvious. And you can see here, the frenum here is below the mucogingival junction. What is mucogingival junction? You can see the hard pink uh, versus the light pink. That frenal attachment should be above mucogingival junction. Here, it's right between the teeth. So if you look at Kotlow's classification, this would be, opening up for me, a type four. And type threes and fours uh, require what's called a phrenectomy. Uh, there's different ways to do a phrenectomy, but when you get something that's a type four, and you see it's inserts right between the mid palatal suture, you actually do need to raise the flap, get to the fibers that attach to the suture, because if you don't remove those fibers and you only do like a laser, uh, you're not gonna get to the root of that frenum and it won't be as successful. So the goal here would be to do a proper phrenectomy to allow these teeth to come together. Uh, other frenums would be, uh, a type three would be not actually into the um, uh, contact between the teeth, but would be slightly higher, still in what we call the attached gingiva. And then we work our way up to the ideal position, which is above mucogingival junction. So uh, in this uh, talk, I'll show you what will be the Kotlow classification for labial phrenectomy. But the thing I do is I, I pull the lip and if it blanches, can you see how it blanches? That's an indication. Uh, the other thing relates to history, uh, such as uh, as a baby, was there problems associated with breastfeeding, uh, failure to latch uh, because of that frenum, right? Um, and uh, certainly when we're doing any orthodontics, the frenum gets in the way of what we're trying to achieve, when in this case is to bring the teeth together. So got a classification for labral frenums uh, we can go through, but this is a classic example of a case that needs a labral phrenectomy um, so that we can bring the teeth together um, and it is one that's attached in the wrong zone, uh, and in fact it's attached between the teeth. So that's a little summary on uh, labial frenums and uh, the phrenectomies. In the simpler phrenectomies, we can use a laser, soft tissue dyed laser. In the more difficult phrenectomies, we're gonna do it with a, a standard technique, which is going to be with uh, scalpel sutures and a number six round burr to gut the uh, insertion of the fibers into the frenum. Um,